All right, what's going on, you guys? Nick here with Nick Strength and Power. I've got a couple of interesting stories for you guys today. The first story that I've got for you guys today, Ian Valier switching coaches and announces his future competition plans. Ian took to YouTube yesterday to announce that he's going to be teaming back up with Matt Jansen as his new prep coach, so he will be leaving Patrick Tour. And he talks about really how disappointing his Olympia placing was um, and that kind of being a catalyst for this. He also says that he's currently in prep, and he's less than 13 weeks out from his first show this season, which will be the Toronto Pro, obviously, in Canada. So it's going to be interesting to see if this strategy plays out well for Ian, because obviously this year, or this past year at the Olympia in 2022, he had a pretty substantial drop in placings to the point where he was outside of the top 10. In the year prior, he almost made the first call out. Now, obviously, Matt Jansen has been a pretty successful coach, especially in recent years. Um, tremendously successful with Nick Walker, Sean Clarita, who just won the 212 Olympia for the second time. Will this possibly be the career move that really turns things around for Ian Valier? Let me know what you guys think in the comment section below. Um, but I feel pretty optimistic about this one. Matt's track record lately has been pretty solid, and I think he's going to apply that pretty well um, to Ian Valier. But let me know what you guys think in the comment section down below. Now, next up in the news, um, pretty big story coming out today with Sergio Oliva Jr. So Sergio posted a pretty lengthy reel to his Instagram page addressing being locked up in Dubai. Now, the catalyst for this was actually a pretty minor traffic incident that kind of snowballed into something a lot more serious for Sergio. So the way Sergio describes it was he was driving regular speed, pretty slow through traffic, and there was a courier, like a delivery guy, kind of weaving in between lanes and driving between cars, and that courier hit Sergio's car and then fell off his bike. And then after falling off his bike, he ended up getting ran over by a truck, not by Sergio, but by somebody else, and ended up later dying at the hospital. So because of this, and because of the laws in Dubai, Sergio was basically locked up until they figured out what exactly happened, until he was ultimately found um, to have no, you know, no guilt in this situation. He wasn't the direct cause of this guy's death, and he was found to be not at fault. But I guess the way the system works in Dubai is... It's kind of guilty until proven innocent type of thing. And when someone dies, they lock up anybody that could have anything to do with it. And Sergio, I guess, was he, he kind of fell victim to that. So he was locked up, you know, until this whole thing was resolved rather than being locked up after if he were to have been found guilty, which he was not. Now, he did confirm that he was in prep during all this, meaning he was getting ready for a show. But he also talks about how badly this messed him up and how this was one of the worst experiences of his life and how his stay there in that jail, even though he can't describe or talk about the, uh, the conditions there. He says it was one of the worst things that's ever happened to him and he's been locked up before. So the fact that he described him being in prep while he was going through all this, maybe we won't be seeing him finish out that prep, although that seems relatively insignificant compared to the loss of somebody's life. But I do know, in terms of bodybuilding, a lot of fans were excited to see Sergio Jr. make a comeback. We haven't seen him compete in quite some time, and even this year, prior to the Arnold Classic lineup being announced, I had a lot of people messaging me saying they were hoping that Sergio was going to be on that, on that list when it came out, and asking me if I knew whether or not he was. Obviously, he was not on that list, but I know there's a lot of people that want to see him come back, and I think the fact that he said he was in prep here have a lot of people, specifically his fans, excited to see him back on stage. So hopefully... He is able to mentally get through this and recover from what happened to him uh, and from this situation in general and maybe get back on track. But right now he has no criminal charges and this whole situation has really wrapped up for him as being a traffic violation. So that is the story. That is what actually happened coming directly from Sergio's mouth. So I wish him the best um, and I hope he's able to put this in the past and kind of move on with his life. Even though this seems like a very uh, difficult situation to have gone through. Now, next up in the news here, I also wanted to include what's next for William Bonac because he seems to indicate that he's going to be taking the rest of the year off, but he will be back for the Arnold Classic next year. I think a lot of people, myself included, were surprised to see Bonac place as low as he did. He placed seventh here. He was outside of the top six. He was not in the first call out. Um, and he put up this post where he said, well, that was a long season for me. 2018 first attempt, 2019 second attempt, and he goes on to 2023 where he was seventh place. And he can he says, I honestly can say I won't miss my diet for a while. Time to focus on my family and other businesses aside from bodybuilding. But I will see you all next year in Columbus, Ohio. I'll be back. So I think a lot of people wondering after that placing, um, if this was the end for William Bonac, he is one of the older competitors. He's in his 40s. Um, I don't know how many other guys in this lineup were in their 40s or ahead of 40 aside from Kamal El Gargney. But Bonac certainly was towards the older end of that spectrum and towards the outside of the conversation for the win. 
But I actually am glad to hear that he's coming back next year. I want to see him try again. I want to see him continue um, to hopefully improve. Because a lot of people forget it was just last year at the Boston Pro and just last year's Arnold. We saw him come back um, to almost exactly how he looked when he won the Arnold Classic. He looked just as impressive as ever, the last Arnold in that Boston Pro 2022. He's still got some fight left in him, and I think he still has the potential to bring it again. Now, it also looks like Sean Clarita plans on competing in the Arnold again next year. He talks about um, his Arnold Classic experience competing in Open this year and how when he was backstage, apparently Arnold Schwarzenegger said that his physique was flawless when he met him and he compared him to Franco, actually called him Franco. Then he ends this post by saying, the one thing I'll say is I'll be back. Obviously, Sean Clarita took a first call-out spot here. He was top five. He was fifth place. He placed ahead of Akeem Williams and William Bonac, right behind Big Rami. Some people were even making the argument that he could have beaten Big Rami. I was not one of those people. I think Big Rami 100% um, deserved a place ahead of him, even though Sean's nickname, which he earned, was the giant killer, and Rami was the giant of this show. So if Sean Clarita does choose to compete at the Arnold Classic again, we do know it would have to be an open. Obviously, there's no 212 at the Arnold Classic anymore. So my question to you guys is, what do you think about Sean Clarita continuing to pursue open bodybuilding? Do you think it's the right move, or do you think he should stay in 212? We've seen him win open shows before, an open show, the Legion Sports Festival, but now we've seen him in a lineup of some of the real big guys in open, some of the really good competitive guys that are at the top of the Olympia lineups. And I do think fifth place for him was huge here. This was actually a really good placing for someone, like I said, 100 pounds lighter than like three of the guys in this lineup. That was a really solid placing for him. But should he continue to compete in open or is he better suited for 212? Because like I've said before, 212 as a division, if it exists for anybody, I think it exists for someone like Sean Clarita. It exists for bodybuilders that are really truly limited in terms of their frame or their height or their structure for how much muscle and how much they can really weigh and how much size they can really bring to the stage. And Sean Clarita is one of the shortest guys even in that division and one of the lightest. So again, my argument would be if that division exists for anybody, it would exist for Sean Clarita. So if Sean were to continue to leave that division and pursue open, then again, the question is, who does that division exist for if not for someone like Sean? I personally, I think he's better suited for 212, but let me know what you guys think in the comment section down below. And now with that being said, I want to show you guys the current qualified competitor list for this year's Mr. Olympia after the Arnold Classic. So Brett Wilkin, Hottie Chupin, Derek Lunsford, Nick Walker, Brandon Curry, Big Rami, and Samson Dowden now, after winning the Arnold Classic, are the only qualified athletes for the Olympia this year. So think of all the names that are not on this list that still have to qualify. Bonac and Clarita, who we just talked about being two of them. Andrew Jack, who we just saw compete. He's not qualified yet either. Hunter Labrada, Ian Valier, Michael Crizzo, and many, many more. So this Arnold Classic was just really the tip of the iceberg for the 2023 competitive bodybuilding season. We've got a lot of, uh, a lot of the fan favorites still have yet to compete, have yet to qualify, and a lot of these upcoming shows I think will be very exciting. So make sure you like and subscribe and stay tuned because there's going to be a lot to cover. There's a lot to, that still has to go on um, between now and the Olympia, and I think it's going to be a fascinating season. And if it's anything like last year, I think it's going to be full of surprises. So that's going to wrap it up for the video today, guys. I hope you did, in fact, enjoy it. Make sure you leave a like, subscribe, all that good stuff. And as always, I love you guys. I appreciate you guys. Nick Strength and Power signing out. All right, guys, don't forget to click that like button and subscribe to this channel if you enjoy the content. Also, check out my Instagram at Nick Strength Power. My Facebook page, which is simply Nick Strength and Power. My secondary YouTube channel, Nick Strength and Vlogs, for vlogs and bonus content that you will not see on this channel. And consider subscribing to my third YouTube channel, Nick Strength and Pokemon, which is all things Pokemon and trading card games completely unrelated to this channel. So if you're into that, give that one a look. And all links to merchandise and social media will be in the description box below. If you guys want a Nick Strength and Power t-shirt, that will be in the Shopify link below. Have a great day.